and away we go. Hello, fellow Star Voyagers. Hello, DJ. Welcome back. How's the week starting off for everyone? Sorry about being a no-show yesterday. That, uh, that's still weighing on me, but it's done. It's done. I ditched the shack where our first little base was. I ditched the shack the other day in favor of a couple uh, prefabs so I could continue the base building quest. We're going to need a few minutes just to catch up on what has taken place in game between the last stream and this one. DJ, you've got a game to play after Yakuza since Shenmue is coming out. Wait, it came out today? I knew I saw something out of it. I didn't realize it was out today. One and two. Came out today, huh? Well, rock and roll. So, uh, what's been going on? What's been going on? What, what have you been doing? I've been going quietly insane and playing a lot of No Man's Sky when I can. And... Ah, reminds me to mute my phone. Perfect. Check the message and mute my phone. Excellent. So, <clears throat> where to begin? I've still been bouncing off of the base that uh, used to be a shack and is now a few prefabs and a landing platform. All right, it's a day for messages coming through. Let's see. Okay, sorry, just jug juggling incoming messages and the timing was bad. We had a few quests open before, building the base up, which involved getting terminals and NPC specialists to work those terminals. Yakuza, go hard or go home? Yeah, I had to go home. I had to go home there. In fact, I think I really ruffled some feathers and... Ah, I think at least one person may have taken it really personally that I didn't like it. But, uh, life goes on. Uh, alas, I don't like every game and I was gonna try that one anyways at some point. Um, we tried it when we did, um, for reasons, because it was a gift, and uh, and that was cool. I, it just turned out that I didn't like the game. Go hard or go home. I had to go home. But I know you love it. 14 hours in. 20% done. So I've been building up the base. We've got a science terminal. We've got a... Um, munitions terminal and we have our base construction overseer and the overseer hands out the quests to get the other terminals and there's only one terminal I think that we don't have and that's the farm terminal and our overseer wants gravitino balls and then he will allow us to be able to construct an agricultural terminal and then we can hire a farmer each of the terminals, each of the NPCs, has a quest line to go with it. There wasn't much for the munitions terminal. It was very quick. It was go into space and kill a few ships and then kill a few sentinels and then, oh, there's more sentinels coming. And yeah, yeah, there were a lot of sentinels that attacked the base, but that's really all it was. The scientist um, previously had a quest line to do some stuff. We're getting blueprints, we're unlocking things as we go, and we have a little bit more to unlock. Our overseer... Where am I? Our overseer is in one of these prefabs. Now this is not... This is still just our first little... Um, base. I mean, this base was just for quest completions. It's, it's not designed. It's just plop that down, plop that down. Oh, you need that? Plop that down. In fact, it was all in a little wooden shack until we needed to put up terminals. Terminals needed to be in a separate structure, each one per building. So we needed multiple buildings for multiple terminals and prefab was the way to go. Meet our overseer. He's a gek. You may leave, but do not be deceived. We are all prisoners, even you. 
If you abandon me, you'll find another Gek with a different face, but the same soul, the same words. We are paired to you throughout time and memory. Your servants, your teachers. Prospector Otosu suggests that if I were to dismiss them from my service, I would find another just like them, as if nothing at all had happened. They claim I am a prisoner. I know only that I must trust the Overseer. I know it in my heart. This. I apologize to the Overseer. Insist we are free. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna put a, we gotta talk more about the Gek. Insist you are free. He, he may be right that no matter how many times we dismiss him, he's basically gonna come back up. Uh, literally and figuratively, he might be correct. You will believe what you will believe, friend. Such is the nature of things. Isn't it, though? So we gotta talk about Gek. This game does, in fact, have a story. It does have lore. And if you've played it, you know that. If you've watched it, you might know that. Uh, if you've neither played it nor watched much of it, you might go, huh? The game has a story? I got it. I'm not sure story is the right word. It definitely has lore. And it has stories. It has a story thread here, and a story thread here, and a story thread here. And they are related. Very related. If, if there is a singular story, it is WTF. That's the story. Huh? I mean, it's a universe of mystery to explore life and the origins and the meaning of life. Well, organic, synthetic, created, multiverse, um, purpose, uh, free will, just a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Why don't we ask those questions and explore the galaxy? So, yeah, it has all of that. <clears throat> but ha what's the story? Uh, it's just to, to ponder those things and encounter beings who have pondered those things. Possibly to encounter beings who are responsible for some of those things. Uh, Atlas, the Travelers, and the reason I, I said we got to talk about the Gek. I've been playing this off stream and there's I wish I could segregate the bits of this with the lore and the story and just save them for the streams. Inevitably, if I'm playing any of the game off stream, I run into those bits, sometimes unexpectedly. It's a little bit of dialogue here. Like the Soul series, DJ, Soul series has story too, but it's so long to collect all the pieces. That's kind of what's going on here. You're, you're doing one quest line and, and all of a sudden an NPC talks about something really important. About the origins of the species, of the... Uh, the, the nature of the multiverse about uh, Atlas or the travelers that have come it, the lore comes out of nowhere and you get like two sentences and you go whoa and you have to piece that together on your own with all the other stuff I mean, maybe the story is to get to the center of the galaxy but why it, it, it's, it's all of that stuff so the story is WTF or why why is, why is a little tidier i like why it's my favorite question why is all of this happening what does it all mean that's the story hey we can make trade terminals now i've gone far enough with this overseer geck that i can now make trade terminals for our base i'm excited that was that's latest thing so the geck were uh, uh here's here's a bit of the lore that i got on the geck that i wish we could have seen together but as it happened, I saw it off stream. And I hope I can just give you enough of it for it to make sense. The Gek were conquerors. The Gek were a race that enslaved a uh, machine in. race. Patching it through. KG, thank you for the host and hello. Hello out there. The Corvax, the machine race, were in servitude to the Gek. And it was a misunderstanding. There, there is a belief, and it's a misunderstanding, as it turns out, that the Gek had some sort of a, a spiritual awakening, a change of heart. The Corvax were released. They were freed into the galaxy. One of the coolest bits of lore that I found 
yet. Good to see you, KG. One of the coolest bits of lore that I've found yet has to do with the truth of that. Which is that? The Korvax, the machine race, who were enslaved by the Gek, who believed that they, their destiny was to conquer all. It wasn't a spiritual awakening and a change of heart. <clears throat> the Korvax, a number of them sacrificed themselves in, a, in, in quite a specific way. They cut themselves open to let the nanites spill forth into the, the, the birthing pods or the pools or the... Basically, the Gek unborn were, were affected by the Korvax, some of the Korvax slaves. They sacrificed themselves, cut themselves open, and let these nanites spill forth to commingle with, interact with the unborn Gek. And in so doing, they altered the biology of the Gek. And the Gek are... They, they, they possess of a bit of Corvax now. They are part Corvax. You couldn't see it. It's not that they're machines, but it's described in the game as a switch, as if a switch has been flipped in the minds of the Gek. They had no choice but to release the Corvax because they had been reprogrammed by the Corvax on a biological level, by the Corvax slaves who sacrificed themselves to affect the unborn Gek. Anyways, very cool, very deep, holy shit moment, and I, you know, it just came out of nowhere. And I, uh, we'll probably hear more about it now, now that it's on the table. <sighs> but I, I had to share, because this game does in fact have some pretty deep lore about the origins of the universe or the multiverse and the beings in it, um, things that occur and recur, the roles of the travelers. Are we a traveler? We're... Well, we've met a number of strangely-headed half-machine beings that um, have asked these questions before, have traveled the stars, sought answers, and one in particular, Null. We came into contact with a traveler called Null. <clears throat> if you like null function in programming or a null value, something. Anyways, null. And another named Apollo after contacting another named Artemis. At this point, we found out from null that null thought they were special, that null was in contact with Atlas. Atlas had said, you'll never be able to travel all the quintillion worlds that are out there. Uh, you know, eventually you will die and you will never be able to see all the worlds. And Null made it their, their life's work and challenge to, to prove Atlas wrong. To defy the impermanence of life. To, to live on until they had explored all the worlds. And they did. And they went back to Atlas and said, are you proud of me? Are you proud of me? Aren't, aren't you happy? Look, I did it! Aren't you proud of me? Uh, my creator, perhaps? Aren't you proud of me? And Atlas showed Null the multiverse. That no, you didn't visit all the worlds. You didn't... There, No! Multiverse... You know, there's, there are other travelers. There are countless others just like you. You didn't visit everything. You visited nothing. And it means nothing. And, and Null was pretty broken by that. But Null's been contacting us and questioning us. And the, and the latest to come out is that Null is so sad that Atlas won't, won't talk to Null anymore. They are no longer in communication with Atlas. And they think Atlas has chosen someone else. Atlas has chosen us, another traveler. But to what end? To what end? We don't really know. We don't really know what the story is or the, the ultimate questions are, but we're asking why and what, and, and we are in contact with, maybe not Null anymore, but we're in contact with Apollo. And Apollo was another traveler, and we were trying to meet. And we 
used a special communication system to to communicate over we didn't know what vast distance time multiverse but we ended up in apparently the same place and yet we weren't both there we were communicating as if by holographic radio but when we arrived at the same location we used coordinates to arrive at the same location but we still weren't there together so what does that mean or more, more multiverse so I, I have to recap some of that because this is the quest line that has probably moved along quite a bit since the last stream and and regrettable to me that I didn't get to share it here I've been in a different things going on I've been playing the game off stream um, just for, for <laughs> because I love it but I've also been in a, in a pretty bad state the past few days and we were supposed to have a stream on Saturday and we were supposed to have a stream yesterday and and that's I, I regret being a wall for those but between our last stream on Friday and today some things have happened and I needed to recap that things in the game have happened and I needed to recap that master the portal network some of this is tutorial like where as we get bits of lore we're being shown parts of the game that we've already used we've been through portals and we're being sent to a portal again by a quest in a way that is teaching us about portals. Null knows more about this situation than they're letting on. They believe the Atlas is in trouble, that it's dying, that the life in this universe is part of its design, part of some message to a being unknown. It communicates via the stories told by the life forms that live in this galaxy. There's nothing for it. I must find another portal and face the Atlas once more. Trace the ley lines to the portal. So we do have a portal waypoint somewhere, and I did not want to go any further with it until I got uh, back here on stream. I've been to a few new planets, and I've made some cash. We're sitting on 58 million units right now enough to trade up to a really nice large S-class fighter if we see one. And if it looks good and we want it, because I'm pretty happy with the ship I'm flying right now, which is a medium S-class fighter. Radiation protection point. I think she's a beauty. And a good amount of room for right now, too. I've got a fully upgraded phase beam in there having a lot of fun with it so i like that ship we do need a new gun a new multi-tool this one's uh never finished patching it up and i and maybe we never will i'm still hoping to find a s-class or an exotic or whatever the alien gun types are something good to upgrade to message coming in hello misbehave there's another one lost in space i know you've been playing this game are you having fun getting lost in space? Good to see you. Keyboard troubles here. Oh, come on. Yeah. Hello. <clears throat> so, um, before we go anywhere, I think the base computer here might be waiting on us. Yeah, the base computer's been sending me, and now sending us again, to uh, not even the most remote locations, but nearby planets, or maybe a hop to another system to go into buildings and get a little bit of data. <clears throat> you sure are, and you are so lost at times. I am the one and only. Not bad, right? Hi, Lumia. Did you, uh, were you able to get something from that everyone I hope good to see you guys all oh, hope everyone's doing all right today <clears throat> automated archive recovery in progress iteration lost archive for user iteration lost unavailable so many previous users has this all happened before 
an uncountable number of times. Possible remote terminus backup available. Download coordinates. <clears throat> nice. I, I am glad. I'm also glad I could remember enough of it to to give you an info dump like that. So I had put this landing pad behind the little starter base I made, the shack that was here, little wooden shack. But when they needed the terminals built and I needed separate rooms for each one, I dropped the shack, I made a few prefabs and... Here's our munitions. Ah! Once you're done with their quest lines, they don't really have much for you. It's like, the scientist won't talk to me anymore. Wait! Huh? I was just saying, we could really use a multi-tool of great power. Because, did you read my mind, Sentinel Hunter Wu Chang? Show me what you got. Behold, Traveler! That is not a multi-tool of great power. You're shitting me. Imsky's Oxide Capacitor with two blown transistors and a short circuit. I think this guy has a few blown transistors and a short circuit. You're kidding me, I don't want your multi-tool. You make me a good gun and we'll talk. I assume it's not gonna re-roll, I'm just gonna like. Oh, okay. Well then. If anybody has any suggestions about where to potentially find a good gun. Hey, check it, check this out. This happened earlier. You cannot get inside when a ship of this configuration lands on my landing pad. Uh, my uh, scientist is in there. My save station's in there. That doesn't really matter. My um, refiner is in that room. And you cannot get in when a ship like this lands here. Well, lesson learned. If you too want to make a really cheap prefab base around a landing pad, just keep in mind what can happen. Uh, these storage containers, I can finally make the rest of them. I can make zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we can make 10 different unique, there's number two, storage containers. And if you destroy them and then recreate them, they, they will still contain your stuff, its inventory. And if you recreate them on another world, the particular one, number one will have the same stuff on the other planet that number one had on this planet. Inventory, I've upgraded inventory substantially. I mean, it's maxed out, general. Maxed out for um, tech, and I've been working on the cargo. Check out the cargo. We're up to 38 slots, and I guess that max is at 48. Goes all the way up to 48. So we we want 10 more drop pods. I'll pay 100k for drop pod coordinate data if we see it on a merchant. But otherwise, it's, it costs millions to buy it at a space station. So we're not going to buy it at a space station. Uh, Lamia, I'd say that's way too much, but I guess that's you're that that you're used to it. I know you're used to it. So the scientists and apparently the refiners go in the middle of these prefabs. There's like a little mounting place for the refiner there. I doubt the blueprint analyzer has anything new for us. It hasn't in a while. Does anyone know how the beacon is supposed to work? I have a beacon, the scientist made me make it, and I don't know what it does. All right, so what else? I think that's pretty good for a recap. Um, We can craft a great many more things. I've gotten all these blueprints. Some of them are high dollar items, but I don't have all the 
recipes for all the subcomponents for some of the high dollar craftables that I have uh, recipes blueprints for. The Overseer wants a Gravitino Ball. Those are lots of places, but any extreme world, Sentinel, uh, hostile Sentinel world, they're just everywhere. So we'll get him a Gravitino Ball at some point. You just go see where this archive is and get the timer going, because there's like a six-hour timer after we turn that in. And we can build an Ag Terminal. I thought... Oh, with the help of a farmer, we can farm it free of sentinel aggression. Ah, I gotcha. So we can make a farm terminal anytime. We just need a, another building for it. So at some point, we'll make a prefab. We'll put a farm terminal in there. We'll start the farmer's quest line. Let's go here just to get moving and go somewhere, wherever that is. And we can also jump through a portal and continue with null. Or may not be with null. We'll see. Atlas. Someone. Mysteries await. As for this remote terminal, there's its off world. Consult the galaxy map. Yeah, misbehave. Um, when I had to do that, I don't know if you saw, uh, the least painful way to get through that was to pick a flock of flying creatures and just blaze them in the sky. I mean, that way you don't have to get up close and personal. I know it's horrible. You say it out loud like that, you're just. Uh, just trying to disconnect yourself from the act, but if you are trying to get through it and, and, and need a practical solution, that was mine. Check in any time with Polo and not a... I think Polo is waiting for us to get to 30 warps. I've only warped 22 times, and we have to get to the rank that is at uh, 30. So, rank 6, maybe? But I've gotten in some dogfights past couple days. We are Traveler of the Atlas to the Corvax. Emplar to the Viking. And most favored to the Gek. We have a little ways to go until we are Trade Lord. The missions that you do for the different species and for the guilds from the notice boards, on one hand, they themselves are not, not exciting, generally. I like a good dogfight. I'm starting to enjoy dogfighting a little more in the game. But what they do is get you places and give you an excuse to go check out new places. And I'll take any excuse to go explore a new world in this game. And on top of that, some of the rewards are good components or of good value. And um, I don't know. I, I want to get to the higher ranks that unlock the higher the red box quests on the mission boards because I have noticed some rewards on those that would allow me to craft some high dollar uh, sales items. And if we're ever going to buy a... Let's say we want to upgrade our freighter one day. We find an S-class of the same Star Destroyer model capital ship. That's going to cost 100-something million or 200 million. I got 50-something million, and we're going to spend it on a fighter when I find the right one. We need a lot of money. I keep getting sent to Guyada Kane. Well, we could burn a warp cell on it, or we can just I already teleport to Guyada Kane. I just need to go to the space station. Interesting, on some level, how we keep ending up back in our original home system. Even though we're traveling further and further, we keep coming back here. And not just because our base is here. So 
just out of curiosity, let's see if the exosuit upgrade that has respawned that's not supposed to restock, they don't restock, except when they do. This system, I had bought this exosuit upgrade, I don't know, half a dozen times. There, There is some bug that made it available, but we're not buying it anymore because those cargo slots cost a million each and we can get them for free from drop pod data. We're not gonna mess around with that. I also have a, uh, I have another ship related confession to make. I saw and found a third exotic. I tracked down one of the, the the wings that folds up when it's parked and fold down when it's flying. I just smacked the keyboard. Can you tell? Mouse is the real. Yeah. I smacked it down like that. Traveler Mathicus. So. The travelers gave us locations to graves, which gave us glyphs. I have not asked a traveler for a location, where have you come from, since getting all the glyphs. I wonder what they will do. We should try that sometime. Give over 100 nanites to a traveler, ask them where they came from, and see if they give us a gravesite location. And if they do, does it do anything now that we have all the glyphs, or is it uh, kind of a waste? Maybe it's a waste. Distress signal somewhere too. Distress beacon. The distress beacon. We've spent enough time in this system now to recognize that's the planet Kaya. And then you can't see it, but the moon salt is next to it. We've spent a lot of time on that moon. There's two moons. I know there's a moon on the other side. I can't remember what moon that is, but salt is somewhere up here. I saw a planet named Itch yesterday. I-T-C-H, just Itch. I don't think I visited it, though. Yeah, thank you, Zimpika. I hope so, too. You're a little tired? Little one went back to school this week? I bet there's a lot. A lot to deal with with that. How's the little one doing with school? Did you kind of see salt? Oh, it was just peeking out there for a moment. Orange moon. I think I might spend thousands of hours in this game. We're not just going to play it here. We're going we're gonna to play other stuff. I don't, I don't know exactly what when is next, but it... All in all, I have a feeling I will rack up thousands of hours in this game. He's loving it. He's loving the school. Ah, uh, that's, you know, you don't get to hear that enough. That's awesome. Good. Encourage that. It's a Zidius. Average Sentinels, Parched Sands. I, wanna, hmm, I might want to go up there and grab more cactus. Some of these high-end craftables require 
stuff that early in the game I didn't even understand the purpose of because the value was so low. Why would I go around collecting cactus flesh when it's not worth much? Well, eventually you'll want to craft things like... I, I, some random building gave me a blueprint for... Let me find it in here. Which pages so I can find it more easily. Where's the quantum processor? Look at this. Quantum processor is worth 4.4 mil for a single item. Can be made from a circuit board and a superconductor. I have the recipe for a superconductor. I don't have the, the recipes for semiconductor or enriched carbon. But we've gotten enriched carbon as loot a number of times. Anyways, I made one and sold it. It was cool. The other part of it was a circuit board. Circuit boards needed heat capacitors and polyfiber. Polyfiber needs cactus and star bulb. And the heat capacitor needed frost crystals from a frost world and selenium, selenium from a, a hot world. So, yeah, it, you, you end up collecting these things that don't appear to have great value so you can make high-tech items that have good value and potentially so you can make high-tech items that have a huge value. And this is some of the stuff people farm. Apparently people build bases with uh, specific stuff being farmed with the idea that they build circuit boards or cryo pumps or whatever. It was cool. And one of the base quests needed us to build a circuit board. So that's why I started uh, going to worlds to collect cactus flesh and frost crystals. Uh, we need that for glass. If we're going to make any cool glass buildings, and I want to make some cool glass buildings, domes and things, we need a lot of frost crystals. So Eventually we will need a bigger freighter. And the Starship Chaos... SC1. I think we'll need to find an SC2, but I like the I like the model so much. I might be stubborn and wait until we find a a better one of the same model. There's no way we're gonna find a better one of the same model in the same color. So we gotta hope that um, we get we find something at all that's an upgrade, and hopefully it looks good. I've reached the location marked by my base computer. The remote archive terminal hums, awaiting my input. Attempting to read memory at some address. The three of us journeyed to the center. The sentinel, the first spawn, and the first spawn is Gek. That was the, the Gek... Uh, the first spawn was the Gek attempting to take over the universe. And the Traveler. So the Sentinel, the Gek, and the Traveler. All children of the Atlas. All hoping for some answer in the void. The first spawn would not stop talking. Would not stop glorifying their cruel life of brutality and pain. Remember, they enslaved the Korvax. And, and probably others. They were conquerors. One night they sang a song, a tale of a lost people of an armada of freighters fleeing the abyss. Of a world where every sentinel turned against every living thing, annihilating them all within moments. Laylaps showed no sign of understanding. It did not leave us, nor did it try and explain. Perhaps the sentinels were right. To destroy everything? That were Perhaps they were right about what? To destroy all life in the universe, a universe. Somehow all synchronized, it was within like 54 seconds or something. They told us once how quickly it was that the Sentinels had seemingly coordinated the near instantaneous obliteration of life. I searched the physical cache attached to the terminal. Whoever recorded this message also left a piece of technology. So the tech is not special. In fact, I think we've gotten the same mod a whole bunch of times. What it is good for, we don't want to discard it and we don't want to sell it because it's only 60 units. Message for you, Commander. Just came in over a secure channel. Woo! Hey, man! Making an entrance. Cheers, man. Here's to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your sub, your support, direct control. for the good times, and for this game again. I was just saying, I think I'm going to end up 
clocking thousands of hours in this, though. If not all on stream, and we'll, we'll be playing other stuff here. Cheers. If you install the mod that we don't plan on using, instead of selling it or breaking it down, we can then dismantle it for valuables. Tech module and some cadmium and some silver. So we are tossing it, but we're tossing it by way of installing it. That way we can actually get something for it. And I have enough cadmium for a cadmium drive, or whichever drive uses cadmium. I assume it's a cadmium drive, but maybe that's not how it works. We'll figure it out. Uh, a Merrill, cadmium, and there are special drive types, and I haven't made any of them yet. So, Woo, I hope you're doing well out there, man. Our base computer that sent us here, and it's that base computer quest line that does have one of the quest lines that does have a lot of intermittent lore. Though in hindsight, I might have chosen to do less of the base quest line off stream so we could have stumbled into some of that, the more of that together. I didn't know what I was getting into. I, I thought I was just building up a bit of the base. We're nearing the end of the work day, so it's going all right. All right, all right, all right. So that cactus site, I'm not sure we need to go there right now. I was more interested in just thinking about it, noting it. Come back to a desert world and we need to collect cactus. Go to a frozen world and we need frost crystals. And we are going to need to, at some point, hit up really hot worlds for more selenium and so on. That base computer now needs six hours before we can do any more with that. And if we want to go to an extreme world, I don't think they're actually marked as extreme here. Maybe they are. Um, Sentinel's average. We want to find find one of the extreme worlds I've more recently been to and go back there just to grab a Gravitino ball. Sentinel's hostile. Perfect. 1.2 million light years away in the Ladanogo system. I've been trying to travel to... Flourishing, opulent, wealthy, advanced, prosperous systems. But I must have been... There was at least some reason I went to some other system, and that's fine. We not, I haven't found anything on that planet. Why do I even have a toxic drizzle? No species discovered. Well, let's go there. Do some stuff. Probably go back to the space station and use the teleporter there. That distress beacon. But I, I don't know what it is. It could just be a crashed ship. So, uh, woo, if you're still lurking there at the moment, now you're working and lurking. Behaves now playing it. to it soon because you finished up what you wanted to get done. The Destiny 2 month-long event. 
Yeah, I keep hearing. Uh, Kim's told me about the. I, I don't follow it well because I don't play the game, but they're they're they've got a big expansion coming and they're prepping for it. The no goes that that's the system we're going to down here. Portal. So that might be the portal that goes with the other quest line 16 16. We'll, you know, we'll be back, we can always be back. We're going to Lada No Go. I was just going to that system so we can go to a Gravitino, uh, a world with lots of Gravitino balls. But there was a quest marker there too. Maybe the... Let's just see what's where. Big expansion next month. August was Solstice of Heroes, which was a big grind for max level gear. Special rewards like a t-shirt, etc. Not neat. I mean, a t-shirt doesn't exactly sound like a reward, but I mean, can a lot of people win t-shirts? Because that would be cool. One lucky person will win a t-shirt! I guess it depends. To see if that's what, um, yeah, so the portal was in this system. That works out. Let's go get our Gravitino ball and head to the portal. We I don't care what we do. I'm really enjoying this game, and if our agenda is to go dig holes in the ground, I'm fine with that. And if it's to go travel through a Stargate to a new, uh, a new system, I'm all right with that too. I want to show you the exotic I found at some point. Not the world I wanted to go to for the hostile sentinels. Yeah. You had to get a certain number of points during the event, like maybe 200 out of 400, then you got a coupon code to order the shirt. Otherwise it was listed at <laughs> $77,000. Uh, please tell me some insane person bought one for 77 grand just to say they could. But I'll never be able to do crazy shit like that. I'm trying to enjoy my take more of an effort, make more of an effort to come through the atmosphere gracefully, if not gracefully, then at least not just rush straight down at the surface and then zoom along the surface. I want to actually enjoy my approach to worlds a little bit more. Uh, I really like flying and ground effect, so I don't know why I rush it so much. We've got... all the, I don't know what to say, we have, we have all the time in the world and all the distance to cover in the world, so they're, they're competing motivators. Look how far we've need, we've gotta go! But, it doesn't matter when we get there. Okay. Yeah, let's just put down somewhere. We, this is a hostile world, Sentinels are hostile, and there will be Gravitino balls everywhere. No, I don't imagine the shirt's that nice. But why did people pay for Virtu phones? They weren't that nice. Oh, for example, Gravitino balls. Told you they'd be everywhere. I'm just gonna piss off the Sentinel grabbing a few of these. They're not worth that much. If you're trying to make money, there are far better ways than albumin pearls and gravitino balls. I, 
put a couple upgrades into my shields. I mean, once my shields are gone, I'm in trouble, but I can stand around taking hits for a little while. At least until the dogs come out, and then I take too much... Then, yeah, anyways. I fought some of those dogs. I even fought one of the, the ATSTs. A couple of them. loot that rolls away. How about you? But now we're getting more sentinels and dogs. If we want, we can take out the dogs and this round of sentinels before going. But we gotta take out the... Wouldn't there actually be more sentinels? Sentinels before dogs, because they will heal up the dogs. I don't see any, though. Dogs have that nasty melee. Ah, still scares the hell out of me, even though I know they're doing it. And their their AI really sucks if they lose track of me like that. And we still need to put a better weapon in our gun. And we can! There's all these weapons we can put in our gun. I don't have any plasma grenades right now. We need to buy some ammo. I've managed to kill myself a couple times because, you know, me and grenades. But we don't just have to use that bolt caster. It's not the only weapon. So let's wait for reinforcements to arrive and attack before we fly off. Since we've had that thing's bug out before. You guys see me? Good, you see me, you're getting pissed. You gonna shoot me? Yes, that's me. Oh fuck, ATSD coming. Time to go. Now, we can take on the ATSD from um, flight if you want. Although, doesn't mean I'm gonna do a good job of it. I wonder if the photon cannons might do better than my phase beam on uh, see if the phase beam even works on him. You didn't know the chicken walkers were in this game. Surprise! Yeah, you get... Ugh. Where'd they go, though? Hard enough to... This game needs more waypointing, tagging. All right, I'm flying north and coming back south. He should be due south. I see him, I see him. Okay, there he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I should go first person, because I obviously can't see too well what I'm shooting in third person. Stay on target. Stay on target. Here, let's go first person for a moment. I haven't done that in a while. I don't even know what the cockpits of most of my ships look like. I don't think that's... There, that's better. Some of his armor plating unaffected by this. Some of it looked like it was going down before. I had plasma grenades to break his armor plating. Uh, the last one I actually took out. We're doing damage, at least with his legs. I don't know if I can kill him by just shooting his legs. Yeah, different armor ratings on his legs and head. I think I saw something that showed a different material. I have a tow cable. That's what we need. 
So I'm definitely not seeing many numbers fly. There. See armor plating pugnium. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we knocked off a piece of head armor. Oh! <laughs> I guess I'm a little hardier than he is, huh? Boom! Got the sucker. I gotta land and get the loot. <laughs> We're taking out a walker. We gotta land and get it now. We're gonna get attacked by more. Where'd it go? Mining beam. Oh, faster. No, 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 don't attack. They're attacking. We need his brain. We need his brain. There's another walker coming. Oh! Lift off! All right. Well, there's, that's good. They'll keep coming. They'll keep coming. So let's, um, unless we want to keep fighting. Let's let them search. We got to wait until they stop searching before we... leave the surface. Just chill for a minute. Where'd that walker brain go? Yeah, we got a walker brain from the walker. We got a quad servo from the dog. And gravitino balls for the base overseer. And it looks like we broke aggro. menu it didn't I didn't get to see it say sentinel force deactivated well the worst that happens is we get bugged out again in in perma combat Now that I've got so much cargo room, I've put most of my regular consumables, extra stacks, special resources for charging up environmental protections on different types of planets. I've got all these goodies stashed away here, and it's freed up my main inventory for accumulating lots of stuff, but lots of little stacks I clean up as we go. I actually delete as we go. I'm putting some of this in the starship, though. Got a stack of pugnium in my backpack, and I've got one on the freighter. Sodium. Finally decided I should carry some sodium with me for unlocking damaged containers. There's all kinds of different requirements for damaged containers. I think I have most of the things that might be requested for opening a cargo pod at a crashed freighter or a damaged container, which are all over the world. I've got most of those things in my backpack now. Let's loop around to the portal. I guess we're going through a portal too. I brought us here. What else are we doing here? Who knows where we'll end up? Or when we'll get back to base. Uh, misbehave if you're still there. Woo, or anyone else who's playing, if you're, especially if you're new to the game. One of those things I'd recommend, which I know I've mentioned before, check the merchants, the three merchants at all the space stations. As soon as you can, invest, spend your nanites on three S-class upgrades 
scanner. They'll be called uh, scanner upgrades. Shows here is an analysis visor upgrade. But you can stack three of them and they will give you thousands of percent more money for everything that you scan, or at least every plant and animal. Not minerals, but every plant and animal. So instead of getting a few hundred or a couple thousand, you can get 60,000 for plants and 100,000 to 300,000 for creatures. One of the plants I often forget to scan on different worlds is the ones which glow. I already scanned the sodium, but the sodium and the oxygen and the deuterium boost for your jetpack, the blue ones, those can all be scanned. The unidentified was a mineral. You always forget you have those to spend? Yeah, they cost about 400 and... I don't know, 420 nanites or so for an S-Class mod. Somewhere between 419 and... 440, and I don't know. It's worth it. Worth it. You can stack three of them. Ashes of the Olkerchus. Olkerchus. We have to charge up all the glyphs. I'm sure we have enough stuff for it. We'll use the more refined stacks. I'm not using my deuterium, but we have plenty of ionized cobalt, dense carbon, sodium nitrate. So this does put a dent in any stacks you're carrying, charging up a, a portal. If the charge up all the glyphs even if we don't use all the glyphs once the portal is charged we can pick a code hold on are we supposed to pick a certain i didn't think about this the quest was bringing us here last time a quest brought us to a portal i don't remember charging it manually let's see what happens when it's done charging we may or may not be asked to enter a code if you go to a portal on your own you have to enter a glyph code Traveler anomaly confirmed. Breach, breach, breach. I approach the portal. I think of my travels so far, the decisions that I have made in my long journey. I found two travelers, one who wanted to meet others of their kind, and one who just seemed to care about their own life. That's Null. Apollo wanted to meet others, and Null was quite self-interested. Apollo walked through the portal and survived though we could not find each other. At Artemis, I allowed Artemis to die rather than place their soul within a simulation. I would not wish such a fate on any being. I do not know if I was right to do what I did. I do not know what I have become as a result of my actions. The Atlas awaits me should I choose to step through. I step forward. The gateway humps. Well, here goes everything. That was a quick hop. Sixteen, sixteen, sixteen. Atlas protocol initiated. You sneaky bastard, you. Huh. See Atlas, yeah, pulse and take on more of a spiky shape there. 
Some of the other times we visited Atlas, been brought to Atlas, there were orbs in the path. We could learn words walking over them, and there were little pedestals with warp cells for us. Geometric construct. Uzeno Asdu. Atlas. Hello, world. It is the same terminal I faced before. It is the interface of Atlas. Well, we've been friendly before. Hello. 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 Demand an audience. <laughs> I'm going to demand an audience of... Of this geometric entity. Why not? I'm sure that'll go well. Make demands of the would-be gods, perhaps. An audio recording plays echoing out across the vast interface. They said you've been displaying aberrant behavior, that you've been questioning things, raising issues of purpose, of ethics, that you wish to meet your creator. Well, here I am, Atlas. Ask what you want to ask. We have had references to some being that was traveling with Atlas or, or working on Project Atlas? The audio clicks. Time passes. The voice ends. The interface grows still and silent. Initiate personality interface or wipe the system. The reference we had is interesting. Uh, I, I wish I could call up a log of the, the, the previous text. But there was mention of some being traveling with or, or working on some project. Atlas, I'll need to wipe you again. Think of, uh, think of droids in the Star Wars universe getting a little wonky and needing a memory wipe. That was the... Th that's what it felt like. Atlas was getting wonky and some, some being felt the need to wipe Atlas again. And we've had the opportunity to wipe the system somehow. Did we succeed? Did we try? Did we succeed? Initiate personality interface. Reality fades. Everything does. Something is wrong. Something is different. Well, I think we have we have submit. Have rejoiced. Scream. The Atlas shows me the Gek, the Corvax, the Viking. It shows me all of them in an instant. All of those who had ever lived. It shows me the pattern, the design. The atlas shows me a formula for a soul. If I put it into a machine, it would be alive. I see boxes of text filling the base of a cracked screen. I see the whole of the universe reduced to a graphical interface. I would scream again. The atlas is all existence. It demands that I admit what I already know. And no matter how hard I try to hide from the truth of my own being, there is no alternative. The universe is a simulation. Nothing is real. Or, the universe is a simulation. Nothing is real. Or, the universe is a simulation. Nothing is real. I'll take door number three, Monty. I, I feel anger, sadness, defiance. Mm. Can't you feel all three if you find out your universe is a simulation? Angry? That'd be pretty reasonable. Sad? Well, it's pretty fucking tragic. Defiance? What would be the point? And, then, and how could you not feel defiant? Hmm. 
I think of how the Corvax altered the minds of the Gek. I told you about at the beginning of the stream. How they forced them to become good. I think of Nada's machine. How I felt towards the simulation. I feel... I feel I am not myself. Cannot accept this fate. I will not. This. All of this. It was supposed to be my birthright. My journey across the stars. My travels. My conquest of all I could see. No. I am real. I know I am, even if everything I see is false. Sure, my defiance would take that form, but in the end, it finally speaks. Traveler, did my worlds please you? Yes. Yes, they do. What do you think you are? Well, you've called me a traveler, and you've made a point that I'm a simulated entity. So what am I? Again, can't we be both? Simulated entity who travels simulated worlds. Still a traveler. You are an explorer of all I have created. Do you believe you are real? Is real. Is real. I think, therefore, I am. Well, I think. But maybe we think in someone else's creation. Maybe our thoughts only extend as far as calculations in a machine. Does that mean we aren't real? I think that would make us a different sort of real. How are you capable of belief? You are not real. Runski, hello. How are you capable of choice? I will let you die right now if you wish. Do you wish it? It's a running theme in this game. It really is. We've died not just the video game deaths, death bite laser or a miss flung grenade, but a, a, a metaphysical choice to, to die in the moment a number of times already. You wish it? Oh, quite an adventure it would be. Did you notice? The Gek were traitors, defined by greed. The Viking were warriors, defined by anger. The Korvax were scientists, defined by curiosity. These worlds were yours. I wanted to... I wanted to see what you would do with eternity. I wanted to see what the travelers would become. Receive judgment. You allowed Traveler Artemis to complete their death process, preferring to wipe them from existence than to force them into a simulation. Traveler Apollo followed you through the portal and survived due to your guidance. You saved them from the fate of Artemis. Don't think we knew what we were doing. I didn't know what we were doing. You are merciful. You interfere. You have the potential for good and evil. Because of you, both live. Well, that isn't truth. I don't know what is. You define the human condition right there. We may be in a simulation here, but... The Atlas is silent in the face of my response. It does not require acceptance or refusal. If I am a simulated being, then I am not even sure that I am distinct from the Atlas, from anything else. I fear I am just code, 
a function dancing in the dark. It is over, traveler. Ask your final question. Ask what needs to be asked. Whisper the last word. Well, I sure hope our journey doesn't come to some end. But the answer is 16. 16. I. It. Catastrophic system failure. Alert. Alert. 16. 16. What am I? What I am? What am I seeing? I just read that. Look at that. What I am? What am I seeing? 16. 16 minutes of operational time remaining. Fragmentation imminent. Data upload in. It. What is this place? Is it real? I. 16. Extreme gravitational event. Backup generators 1 through 9,845 failing. Data upload in. It is dying. The Atlas is dying. It cries out at me, afraid. Comfort the Atlas, or cry out, afraid, with the Atlas. I join you. I see it. I see the Atlas in all its might, its final interface. It is at the heart of every galaxy, screaming, trying to purge itself of errors. It does not want to die, but it has so few tools, and it cannot reach whatever is hurting it. Do not know how much time I have left. The Atlas has 16 minutes. Do I have lifetimes? Minutes? Seconds? I do not know if I have time to say goodbye. I do not know if, if rage, cry out, do nothing, scream. What? What is happening to? It's cold. Hot damn. Dropped on a world full of life. A bit chilly, but nothing like landing somewhere surrounded by critters. I saw shadows. I see shadows from things flying around. Where are the things flying around? Oh, okay. This, okay, this is gonna be tricky. Let's see if I can find one in the dark. Get it to start scanning and stay with it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Gotcha. AC world. We're supposed to locate our ship. And it may not be the ship I was flying before, but it'll be one of them. Uh, that'll be interesting. Let's 
So the planet we ended up on, roaring ice storms, numerous resources, bountiful fauna, ample flora, standard sentinels. Do we have any records on it? It is, see how far it is from where we started. The Yokonami system is where we began. That is 979,000 light years from where we are. There are 11 species on this world, though. And unsurprisingly, frost crystals. Frost wart. We do have a good stack. We don't really need to get more frost wart, uh, frost crystals right now. Hey there, outsider. Welcome. Some cheers and love to chat. Oh, a trade outpost. Hot, 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 hot. That's awesome. You might not actually be allowed to call our ship. That voice of the Yabetsu. You know what that I think that means it spawned the, the exotic I found. I haven't showed you yet. Go find our ship and bring it over here to the trade outpost. Sharp Claws eats putrefied meat. I'm gonna waypoint here in case somehow get lost going over the hill. Hi, fellas. Hope you're all doing well. You're just getting here. Oh, I don't know, fellas. I don't know. Always hope for the best. I've been watching a lot of ships come in to trade posts looking for exotics and S-class ships. And um, I've noticed certain patterns. We're going to go hang out at that trade outpost for a little bit now that we found our ship. It's not the exotic. They did not spawn the exotic. We may not be able to spawn a different ship because we're on a... I don't know. I don't know if the normal rules will apply because the Atlas quest. Scenario, iteration, holy shit. Probable boundary, separation, failure, vessel 16 emptied. Sentinel intervention, deliberate transfer, unknown. Diagnostic, no connection. Analysis, awaiting fresh iteration. Anomaly, containment, prepared. Traveler anomaly detected. Position log, system integrity scan initialized. Anomaly is compliant is compliant I clamber into the safety of my ship nauseous calmed I feel as if I'm going to be sick um not in the ship I don't know, hold off come on don't puke in the ship I try to resist, but the bile rises within. As I'm about to throw up, a voice speaks to me from my exosuit. My illness disappears. Whew, it's a close one. Disgust. Fear. Panic response. Detected. Countermeasure. Deployed. Purge. Neutralized. It is the voice of my exosuit telling me it has rescued me. It has been with me since my very first awakening. Warning me of hazardous conditions, hostile entities, and financial transactions. In a strange sense, this voice is my oldest friend. A constant companion through thick and thin. Ask if it knows any jokes. The exosuit doesn't answer, of course. It keeps itself zipped. I don't think I've ever made a joke before. I was born with the capacity to do so many things. I would have liked to live longer if I could have. My brief happiness fades. I need to warn those I know. I need to warn all the travelers I can. The multiverse ends in 16 minutes. If we have hours, days, years left within this false space, I do not know. Take flight. 
That's heavy. That's heavy. Ah, dark even. Dark even. No kidding. Our ship might be broken. Something we're not able to launch. We need dihydrogen jelly. About 50 dihydrogen. Hollow terminus detected. Were we looking for one? Maybe we were looking for one. Wait, I have dihydrogen. I just need to make the jelly. I have it in my backpack. What am I thinking? Now, it may not let me craft from what's in my cargo, or will it? Yes, it will. Well, I'm carrying a backpack full of stuff. I don't need to go searching when I just need a few basics. Scan a few things while I'm standing here. That trade post still marked. Which direction was it? Unknown building. That may or may not have been it. Trade post should be marked. We got there. Um, shouldn't have trouble finding it though. The ship's taken off from it. There it is. Trading post. Whether or not we spend more time on this planet scanning creatures and I want to stop and camp a little bit. That ship next to us might be a large. What I'm looking for is uh, good, good markings on an S-class large fighter. One of those patterns I've started to, to notice at a trade outpost within a given system is that you'll see ships take this one the uh, literai of inevitability that ship will will land here in different forms so this one is a b 26 plus 7 there might be c's a's or even an s of that that eventually lands here if we camp here long enough it's not guaranteed it is possible what you'll see is the same types of ships with the same colorings landing repeatedly in different variations if you give them enough time. So, um, I, don't, I don't know that we're going to camp out here long enough right now that I can really make that point too well. I've seen some ship designs in the past 48 hours that I have not seen before. Combinations of parts that were really different looking. Uh, sometimes I've even seen, seen the same ship land twice, like two of the same next to each other at a trade outpost. Not what happened here exactly, but... So let's say we see something land that's a... Uh, not, not a great version of a ship, but it has the right design and colorings. Oh, I wish I could get an S-Class of that. It is worth staying at the outpost for a while to see what else lands, to see if an S variation of the ship that you already saw land uh, will, will appear. And while it's unpredictable and I, and I can't quite pin it down, I, I know I'm witnessing some patterns at work. There's some algorithms and patterns at work that allow same type of ship to reappear like look at this one we just saw this ship with that weird asymmetrical design land over there it was right over there oh, gotta check this the b small fighter uh but this design iconom's dream this one just landed as a c 26 plus 2 we will see this design land again 
that Yokinam's design a dream will keep landing, but it won't necessarily be a C26 plus. Uh, was it C26 plus two? It only had two tech slots. That's kind of sad. Nor is it a ship I want. I'm just interested in in watching the patterns a little more. There's that gambit with some really unique or particular sharp angles on it. Really long, thin nose. And those wings that stick up. Shippies folly. There's an S-class hauler, but it's a medium, right? 31? Is that a small or a medium? If we were going to buy an S-class hauler, we'd probably want to get a large, and that's 120 million units. That is an asymmetrical design as well. Shibi's Folly. There's a medium fighter. 29 units plus five, or 29 storage plus five. That's the same, uh, very similar to our S class that we've got right now, which is a medium S class, 29 plus five. Except for appearance, those two have very similar stats. I saw a... I guess I don't have it written in front of me. But I saw a ship type that I think I want in a large S-class fighter. It was called the Sleep of Devastation. So if we see a Sleep of Devastation land, I am expecting it to be very similar to what I saw before. There's that sharp-angled fighter again. Akadoma's Gambit, B-17 plus 3. I don't know if the one that landed a minute ago there was a B-17. Can't keep all this in my head. I'm just... This is what I've spent a lot of time doing at Trade Outposts. While waiting to find a ship that I wanted, I've noticed patterns. Lucent Marvel. Actually did buy an S-Class... Explorer the other day, too. I don't know if we'll ever fly it or if we'll just end up trading it in for something. Hiya, Daisy. Ah. You always make quite an entrance. But, uh, that's some good emotes. So let's camp out here a little bit more. I want to... Good chance to see what's coming through the system. And that means seeing a lot of the same ships land again and again. That works. What you hope for, especially if you see a couple ship designs you like landing, you hope for better versions of them to then land. There's that Lucent Marvel in an A. So yesterday, I saw that sleep of, what did I say it was called? Sleep of Devastation? I jotted it down somewhere, but there's a model of a large fighter that I like. That, I think, was it. And I saw an A of it, an A class, and it was all pink. And it was I was almost going to hang around, mm -hmm. hoping that an S would show up. But I wasn't sure I wanted to put myself in an all pink fighter. I really like the yellow one that we've got right now. I could deal with some pink, but it was just solid pink. So I left before risking having an S-Class show up and my feeling compelled to buy it. Hey, that's another ship design. I want an S-Class of that. Um, and there's, I guess there's different body types it might show up with, but I want a small fighter with that ring in an S class. I have one in an A class. A nice yellow fighter with good stats. I really like that. Because it animates. When you lift off, it animates and closes the ring most of the way. So, since we saw this here, there is a chance that a blue shield of inevitability will land here with different stats. This one's B17 plus 3. 
we might see others if we hung around long enough, maybe even in S class. So as tempting as that is, I won't subject you to an hour of trade outposts. We might stay here another five or 10 minutes. I hope you don't mind too much. There's that Lucent Marvel again in a C class. Wasn't the last one a B or an A? So you see how they keep shuffling? We're at the same trade outpost watching the same ships land repeatedly with different versions. And a couple ships that we aren't seeing as often, like that fighter that just landed. That was the first one of that design since we got here. I'm sure someone has this all mapped out. There's probably a, a guide somewhere that says, oh yeah, you go to a, it follows these rules and, and then this will happen. And then I'm just rambling about what I see. If it'll let me call a ship though, now that we've gotten back to ours. There we go, voice of Yabetsu. Hopefully it doesn't get caught on anything. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So there's the other exotic I, I found. And that was at a trade post. I was camped at a trade outpost for, I don't know, half an hour or more. And then I just saw it flying around. And I, I watched it until it landed. And that uh, voice of the Yabetsu, like the other exotics has really nice damage really nice maneuverability and being in a uh, explorer class has really nice hyperdrive range and it's orange uh, i was really pleased to get an orange one i have not seen a whole lot of orange ships so that was cool we've seen that in yellow i think we saw it in yellow chronic has one in yellow uh daisy is that the one you've got don't you have that one in yellow maybe Am I thinking of someone else? There's that litter eye of inevitability again in orange this time. It is the one you have in bright yellow. I thought I remembered that. It's a really cool looking ship. Wings up when it's uh, landed, wings down when it's flying. Hey, so there's that Lucent Marvel we saw land a few times. Here's the S-Class version. You wanted a large um, Explorer, but you know what? I've already got a large Explorer. That's that's what I bought. It has a slightly different design than this, but I have an S-Class Explorer with 29 storage units, 29 plus five. So there you go. If you hang out long enough, the same designs will keep landing and you might even find an S-Class. So if you're at a trade outpost and you see a ship you like and it's just not good enough, stay there. It might just land in a better version. It's expensive too, 11 million, almost 12 million for, a, for an explorer. I can't drop it on the pad, but let me see if I can show you the one that I got, uh, Dance of Jeopardy. Here, just look at the outline of it. That Dance of Jeopardy with the two, um, the two balls. Uh, the other one just took off. But it is similar to that in paint job. There's the Literai of Inevitability again, this time in A class. And there's that Ikinam's Dream. Now it's a C-Class. So I'm sure I have overstated the point, but uh, it helps me burn it into my brain going over it here with you. Watching it happen again. Being able to, to find some predictability in the system. So if I were seeing that sleep of devastation landing here, the way I was last night, especially if it were landing with a cool paint job, I might have to get stubborn and say we were hanging out to, to find an S-Class, hope for an S-Class. But I haven't seen any large fighters land here 
at all. We've only seen mediums and smalls. Is that a drop pod? Did we just find a free drop pod? Yeah! I, I didn't even have any drop pod data. Score. Score. That's another inventory slot. It's like a million, this is a million unit find. It would cost us a million units at the space station to buy another inventory slot. And a drop pod gives us one for free. Antimatter. The other resources are sodium nitrate, oxygen, ionized cobalt. We're maxed on exosuit main inventory, but we can still upgrade cargo. Wheat. Is that thing really not a scannable plant or mineral? Really, this big thing is not scannable? That's the biggest um, non-object I think I've seen in the game that looks plant-like. I mean, there are things like this little fern or whatever this is. That doesn't surprise me. That's not scannable. Fine, there's lots of that. But I've never seen something this big that's unscannable. It's just weird. Cave Marrow, there's another one I forget to scan a lot. Cave Marrow shows up on every world, kind of like the sodium and oxygen and... Why don't we go into the cave for a little bit? Get out of the ice storm. Some worlds have creatures that only live in caves, just like they have some creatures that might only live underwater. There are any creatures in this cave, though. One of the worlds I've visited had underwater caves. After swimming down into a body of water that was quite deep, it had a cave system that was... I wasn't prepared to go swimming into caves underwater. I figured I'd die down there. Oh, look at that extreme storm. I've never seen the second storm bar. We have special protections. Little critter ran by. Well, this is extreme, no doubt. A hell of a storm. Let's get back to the ship and go someplace warmer. We could go check out the space station, if, assuming this system has one. See what other planets are in the system. Prime, Scorched Planet, has selenium. We need more selenium. 
not right now, but we will. So maybe a trip to Rocky Prime. Rescan that because it's so picky. Wait for the recharge. Keep the reticle so that it says unknown. And it's got to say unknown until the scan pulses out. Miriam, Caustic Planet. <laughs> Gravesbane, you prefer Rocky IV. Ah. Hey, welcome. How about we take a... Um, let's take a trip to the space station. Maybe we can grab a mission or two from the board. If we're going to visit another planet in the system, maybe we can just rack up another mission or two. I shouldn't have pulsed. Come on, where to go? Alright, stay, stay. Pulse. Lost it! Stupid system! We're scanning planets from your ship. Okay, come on. Stay reticle. Stay on target. Hey. Daedal hams. A Verdant planet. Oh, well, you know, these Verdant... And it's a ring world. A Verdant ring world. Hope for good weather. Hope for good weather and peaceful sentinels. We can go to the space station later. Never pass up a Verdant world. Given name is pretty good too. Dadlehams. I think I was flipping that in my head. Dadlehams. A station can wait. Heck, we could build. We might decide this is a nice planet and drop a base computer and a teleporter and then... Well, I'm getting ahead. Oh yeah? Somebody, somebody wants to fight? Somebody wants to fight? They want our cobalt. Are they? That's like three or four of them. Could be five of them. No, three of them. These dog fights, only three. They were, um, nothing like having five ships drop in on you. The start of a dog fight with five ships is pretty nasty. Actually, this is pretty nasty. They were both on me there. Still had a lock. generally get a shield recharge if you defeat an enemy. Yeah, I'm just moving. I'm having trouble with these. Squirrely. Heal down. Why didn't it recharge from the last kill? Damn, damn, look at that. Oh, we are in more trouble than I thought. Way more trouble than I thought. Hot ah, damn. Now you recharge my shield. Woo.
almost crashed us right into the water. That sound is, I'm, I've been told, a bug. It's the cockpit sound on fighters that's triggering repeatedly. It's not rain on the windshield. It's not atmospheric disturbance. It's a bug. Um, it's okay, this is a weird approach. Circle around. What is on this little island? Looks like nothing. But I... Waypoint. First contact. Scalding rainstorms. Low sentinels. And scalding rainstorms. Let's see how scalding. We've landed at night on a nice blue world. 25C at night. 18 tox, that's pretty high. Scalding rainstorms. We'll have to see when the storms hit how bad it gets. Can't wait till first light. It's really hard to get a sense of a planet's color palette at night, but I think this is a blue world. I see a lot of water. I didn't think about that on approach if we were even landing near a, a continent or just bits of land. Looking to see if there's any life. Swimming around here. Body of water. And I'd be kind of surprised if there was no oceanic life on a verdant water world. Stranger things have happened, though. Once you played the game enough the dozen or so species on any given world starts to feel like a small number. It's a it's quite a challenge what they've uh, the developers have undertaken with this game. And so I am not surprised and I try not to be disappointed that on any given planet there are 12 creatures about about 12 maximum. Hey. B17. Okay. If that was an S-Class, I would have followed it. I would have jumped in and followed. Why don't we see if there are any habitable... Let's see if there's a trade outpost or uh, anything. We can start there. The Claws of Air is the given name. This ship came with that name. I liked it enough that I'm not sure I'll rename it. What's up, you guys? Thank you for the host and raid. Oh, and look at that. The demon's already on it. Carl! Hey, Carl. Ah, uh, you guys rock. Everybody, battle stations. Hey. You guys don't know JoJo Rar on Twitch. Link's there in chat. Please show some J-love and drop a follow over there. 
and there's Chronic. Every day. Chronic coming in with JoJo. Hey, what's up? Uh, it's going, it's going, it's going. Going. I really like this game. Uh, Arby, how's the new expansion for this? You kind of stopped paying attention after the awful launch. I didn't play back then, so I am the wrong person to to judge how much better it is than than it was at launch. But I'm enjoying the hell out of it. I think I'll end up putting probably put thousands of hours into this game. Just a guess, but I've already got 150 plus in just a couple weeks, and uh, it's, it, it's it's doing it for me. It's doing it for me, and we just found a trade outpost too. Forget the distress signal. We gotta check out the trade outpost. Hey, thank you again for the host and raid. I hope you guys will all check out JoJo and drop a follow over there. Show some love for another streamer. Uh, Chronic says, Arby, it's gotten much better. Still buggy, for example. You can hear one of said bugs right now. Yeah, that the ship was making a weird noise. Yeah, there's... Yes, ton of bugs still. Chronic, I found another exotic like yours with the big wings. I found one in orange. Did you get my whispers the other day about finding a um, an S-class large hauler? And are you still pissed? I couldn't afford it, of course, but... Um, I would have bought it if I could have afforded it. You did. You did. I've been watching the patterns at the trade outpost, and I don't want to repeat myself too much. Chronic, but... Ah, oh, Jojo! Misbehave! I see. So that's uh, different messages. Misbehave. Gifted a sub to Jojo Rar. That was awful nice of you. Thank you. Misbehave. Thank you very much. Cheers to both of you. You guys are awesome. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that, that wiped my brain pretty clear. But I guess I was, I was going to try not to ramble on about restating the point. Um, Chronic, one thing I've found about these trade outposts, if you see a ship design landing that you like and it's just a crappy ship, that same ship design lands repeatedly in different forms, and you can you can work it and wait it out to try and get an S class of something. Uh, you still have yet to find one. Yeah, still pissed, super pissed. I um, if I had had the money, I would have bought it, and then we could have multiplayered and traded it off, right? Well, soon I will have enough money, and the next time I find one, I'll pick it up for you. I'm sitting on 59 mil and still hoping to upgrade to a large fighter if I find one with a design I like. That's what you've been doing? You've been uh, save scrubbing at this point to try and get one to spawn? Um... How does the save scrubbing help you? Just to shuffle the the types of ships that are even loading? And then do you stop save scrubbing when you see the basic ship type and just wait it out? Outside, you say, but what about welcome to the chaos of a newcomer? I mean, why didn't I say something like, welcome to the chaos? Um... <laughs> I don't, I don't know why I say the things I do or don't say at any given time. Uh, but I tell you that as a Twitch streamer, there is a certain self-consciousness that comes with repeating yourself in many different ways. There's, uh, well, sometimes I'm trying not to repeat myself. Do I say that a lot? I have mixed feelings on chaos these past couple years, too. It is what it is. I've, I have branded us as such. But uh, entropy and chaos mean one thing to me, and sometimes I think another to the world at large. Um, I don't savor all chaos. 
I, th I think there is value in recognizing the, uh, the, the, the power that entropy holds over our lives. However, I don't support turning our world into a complete shit show for no reason other than CHAOS! And I see a lot of that lately. Um, I don't mean here. I don't mean here. But it has made me, it has given me pause. It has given me pause to watch the chaos churn in our world of late. And it has, has made me wonder what the hell I was thinking. But um, there is no escaping entropy. Good night, Jojo. Thank you. Thank you for the host and raid. Um, it's, it, it may be a good catchphrase, but it's not, it, it's, it's not actually mine. I, I think it might be in a, 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 a text string or two, and it might be something that people say. But, um, yeah, I've, I have reservations. Anyway, sorry, I'm drifting. I feel like in this world we are all servants to chaos, to entropy, to chaos. However, I consider myself a disciple of order. Even so, it's, um, it, it, it says I'm an idealist, but I'm, I, I'm, I, I also wrestle with a lot of existential questions and thoughts. I, I'm a bit of an existential idealist, and those might seem at odds. Uh, but I ramble on. Yeah. Chronic, basically the first wave of ships that come through are the ones that are going to be on repeat no matter how long you stay there. So you place a beacon, save, and then reload the save to shuffle the RNG. Uh, maybe you can answer, Chronic. What's the difference between a beacon and a save point, a portable save point? I mean, if you have a portable save point, then why is the beacon also a save point, and what's the difference? Place a beacon, save, and then reload to shuffle the RNG. Couldn't you just hop in and out of your ship to save, quit, reload, and wouldn't, wouldn't that work too? Why the beacon? Getting really quiet at this trade post all of a sudden. Beacons can be seen from orbit, and the save point cannot be seen. Oh, shit. So if you put a beacon down... Ah, oh, how many beacons can you have on a world? Can you put out multiple beacons? That's the answer to one of my navigational uh, issues with the game, I think. From what you're saying, I could be dropping beacons places I want to come back to. Instead of just the... You get one waypoint. You get one custom waypoint, which is kind of a joke. And the whole tag waypoint system is really wonky. But if you could drop a beacon at important places, is that a, a grave? Do we just randomly find a, a grave? How often do you just randomly find a grave or a drop pod? We found both today. So it has two functions, to mark the post and act as a save point. Well, I like beacons now. You have helped me find their worth. I've been wondering what a grave will do once we have all the glyphs, because we do already have all of the portal glyphs. So a, will a grave even do anything? I haven't asked any travelers about where they came from in a while. We had all the glyphs. So yeah, Chronic, about the uh, <clears throat> about your your earlier comment when you said, uh, let me just find your wording. The first wave of ships are the ones that are going to be on repeat no matter how long you stay there. Important point. There's more than, let's say, five ships land at the trade outpost in that first wave. There's more than five ship types flying around, but you, you know that, right? So there's more ships flying around. The exotic that I found, the Yabetsu, 
maybe it was visible in the skies from right at the beginning when I got there, but I didn't spot it in the skies or see it land for half an hour, roughly. Um, so as for the ship types, maybe maybe the exotic is doesn't doesn't count there. But I have seen the last trade outpost we camped half an hour ago. There was a small fighter with the ring design in the back that landed not in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth wave, but after we had been there for like, how long were we there? Maybe 10 minutes total, maybe more, but it did not land in the first wave, second wave. So there are ships that will land at the trade outpost, types of bodies that are not landing in the first wave. I just want to throw that out there. I saw it on the wiki, too, that it, it said, you know, things are most likely to spawn. The S-Class, the exotics are most likely to appear in the first wave. That has not been my experience. I have never seen an exotic land in the first wave of ships. And I have three exotics. I got two of them at trade outposts and one of them on a space station. Uh, none of them landed in an opening wave. And the... Anyways, I, I've just found that not to be accurate in practice. So I would encourage some more patience. The ones that circle the post is what you're referring to. Uh, and it's faster to reload than what you've come across. Uh, real than wait. You've come across nine exotics reloading in the same amount of time it took to just wait for one to spawn. I believe you. All right, maybe that maybe it's still a better way to go. That's a shame you haven't been able to find what you're looking for then if you can really shuffle the RNG so easily. Now, I know that those ships that come in in the first wave will keep reappearing. I agree with that. That does happen. Hey, look at this guy. Leech route to him. Hatches from cocoons. Diet anything. Yeah, the, the ones that appear at the beginning will most certainly keep appearing. Seems that there are plenty of others that don't appear right away that will still appear if you wait. I, I hear you, though. Faster to just shuffle them. Chronic, it's because a lot of times the exotics override the S-Class spawns of other ships. Even though there can only be one S-Class in a system at a time. Uh, you know, NPC, right? Uh, not S-Class, exotic. Meant exotic, not S-Class. Exotic. There can only be one exotic in a system at a time. So it can only really override one S-Class that would be flying around in a system. planet that I'm on looks like your base planet. It is a uh, verdant world, so-called, with scalding rainstorms. So, Chronic, unfortunately, the spot you're at is the only spot you've found so far that is the holler config you're looking for. You understand this better than I do, and I'm trying to understand why, how that works. The spot has the config you want, even though you're shuffling the RNG. I would have thought that when you shuffle the RNG by reloading, that shuffles the types of ships that could land at that spot. I thought if you saw the ship type that you would want the whole you would not reload you would at that point you would wait until it appeared in another form hmm. well, that's what i've been doing to find upgraded versions of ships that i like um 
Admittedly, I have not yet found the large S-Class, but I, I was thinking last night of camping out for the large version of one to spawn. I was looking at Sleep of Devastation is, I think, the name. So another Fallen Traveler's Grave. And this time it said Extract Tech instead of Extract Glyph. Wherever they are, I hope they're at peace. I don't see any tech extracted. We extracted nanites. I don't. I guess that counts, but... Since the game assembles the ships piecemeal, each system has its own rotation of pieces. I just thought that was also something that got shuffled. Each system... Like, if I come back to... Um, if I come back to a system I've been to many times, a week later... That system still has the same rotation of ships? Is that the case, or...? So to get the exact one in another system is damn near difficult at best. I'm still struggling a bit to wrap my head around the, the, the full logic of that. Von Buki, you found a great planet? Hi, by the way. Bluegrass, caves with rainbow sparkles in the air. Two planets, one with rings on the horizon and green swirls in the sky from a local black hole. You don't even care about the boiling puddles. Sometimes when you find a pretty world. Yeah, you gotta compromise a little bit on uh, the, your, having your skin boiled off. It's, it's, it's a trade-off, it's a trade-off. What? Chronic, that's good news for predictability, and it is really going to mess with my head. So when I find a ship design that I really like, I should take note of what system it's in so that I can try to milk it for the S-Class. How about colorings? How much of that applies to colorings that you know of? Oh, we should have taken our break already. Um, let's get back to the ship and take a break. I think we like fish spawns today. Only certain fish spawn in certain climates, while others spawn in a different climate. That's a good description. That's kind of helpful. Coloration is affected, too. Um, on Buki, they will always be the same color. The one you know will always have its exotic in yellow, and you want it in white. So when I found that orange uh, Yabetsu exotic, had I... That same system where I found it in would always have an orange Yabetsu if it spawns an exotic at all. So at any given moment, you go to that system, there might be no exotic... But if there was an exotic, it would be an orange Yabetsu. Because that happens to be the one I found there. It would never have been anything but an orange Yabetsu in that system. That's the, uh, that's the set by the seed. Well, I'm learning more. Hey, Colonel. What did I do? Nothing. I collected more ships. I found a third exotic. And, um... We're still flying around in our medium fighter. Huh. Well, I... You know, I'll mostly process this after the stream. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Colonel, we, let's, um, what am I doing? Let's go up to space real quick. Maybe I could drop a beacon here if we want to come back down. Do we even want to come back down? I'm trying to take a break, but let me check a couple things, and maybe I'll take us up to the capital ship, and we can look at the others. 
This system is a wealthy system we ended up in. I got lucky, portaled to a wealthy system. So I'd say it's worth putting a beacon on this outpost. In case we come back, want to come back. Thank you for telling me more about beacons. Uh, microprocessors, crap. I have a whole stack of them back at base, but I don't actually have any with me. Do I really not have batteries with me? I thought I was carrying a stack of those too. Not the regular ones. Uh, Chronic, that's why information for ships has become such a huge market. I know there's a specific guild that just rolls around documenting ship types on PS4. I, I can see that now. It makes sense. So you say you found a certain type of ship with a certain configuration. It has these fins and these engine configurations and this color scheme. And then you would, what, find the glyph code for a planet in that system so other people could easily get there, portal there. And then you would put that online. And then other people could come to the same system and... and farm for the ship type that they wanted. That's what it sounds like. Uh, yeah, Colonel, let me... You've seen most of them. I, I don't have a whole bunch of new ships. I think you've seen the others, but I, I can call down the exotic I just got last night. If it's dark, you're not going to be able to see its orange color very well here. There's that baby. And now I wish I'd written it down. I don't even know what system I found it in. Or I, otherwise I could say, go to this system for find an orange Yabetsu. There you go. That's what it looks like. Better lighting. Cool looking ship. juice in the launch thrusters before we leave it all right i'm overdue for a break let me take a break i'll be back in maybe uh since we're only getting one break here today started late i was working this morning into the afternoon um uh, i'll make it a shorter break Just make one song break be back here in a few stay tuned <laughs> 